As emphasized by the ICTY, IHL treaty rules must not be considered as protecting the reciprocal interests of the state parties, but as safeguarding and promoting fundamental values, in particular human dignity that transcend the interests of states. It is in that sense that IHL treaties are said as having a non-reciprocal nature. This entails specific legal consequences that depart from the normal rules regulating treaties. We'll examine here only two consequences of the non-reciprocal nature of IHL treaties. The effects on other state parties following on from violations and the methods of interpretation. The non-reciprocal nature of IHL treaties has a significant effect on the consequences of a material breach of IHL by a belligerent state. In the event that the state's party violates the terms of a reciprocal treaty, the other state's parties would be entitled to invoke that breach as a ground for non-performance of their own obligations. However, in IHL, this is not permissible. We may find evidence for this position from a number of sources. Firstly, Article 1 common to the four Geneva Conventions requires party states to respect these conventions in all circumstances. As we will see later, it is understood as meaning that they must be respected even if the other contracting states do not comply with the conventions. Secondly, the law of treaties normally allows states party to a treaty to suspend it or terminate the treaty vis-à-vis -vis another state party if that state has violated the treaty. This mechanism is provided under Article 60 of the 1969 Vienna Convention on the Law of Treaties. However, this article expressly indicates that it does not apply to provisions relating to the protection of the human person contained in treaties of a humanitarian character. It cannot therefore be invoked to justify any violation of an IHL treaty in reaction to a prior violation. A second particular effect, which is said to be a consequence of the non-reciprocal nature of IHL, concerns the interpretation of IHL treaties. It is claimed that because the objective of the treaties is the protection of the dignity of people, that the treaty should always be interpreted in the way that gives greatest effect to this objective. This method of interpretation is referred to as purposive interpretation. Adopting a purposive approach to interpretation would allow those tasked with applying IHL greater discretion to ensure that individual receives a high degree of protection.